leave it all behind you I said take down everything that stands in your way Don't stop believing it'll work out again My friend, stand out and be a part of everything good Wake up, you're gonna be all that you should Try out all the things you always wanted to be Hey, try to imagine what a world would look like if the only thing that mattered was money. Was it money? How much you have of it? Your entire value as a living creature, as a thinking, feeling, dreaming, hoping, wishing human being all circled around and depended on one thing how much of it you had how much money you had all the rest of it your imagination your your creativity your ability to love your ability to comfort other people or make somebody happy all those other things mattered absolutely not at all the only thing that mattered at all was money and how much of it you had. Imagine now that you don't have any money or you have just enough to get by. Every month you're living paycheck to paycheck if you're lucky enough to have a paycheck at all. And if you don't have a paycheck then you're scrambling to do whatever you can. Whatever entrepreneur kind of thing you can do. Just to keep your house, to keep the roof over your head. If you have children, or if you have animals, or if you have anything at all that you care about that's depending on you, you have that added stress of still being able to provide food for them and shelter for them and care for them. Imagine that you're just barely making enough to pay the bills and to keep them fed and warm and safe. Just barely making those bills. But your government is telling you that you have to have health insurance. And because you're out there busting your ass trying to make enough money to survive because unemployment benefits are not enough to, to keep your house, to keep everything going that you had before. So you, you're trying other ways to make money and because you're not living off the state, because you're not living off taxpayers, you're actually trying to make money yourself by your own power. They tell you that you're not really eligible for government assisted insurance, or at least not very much, certainly not enough to be able to afford $350 or $400 a month for insurance that has a huge deductible, thousands of dollars deductible, which means even if you do get ill, seriously ill or seriously injured, you still are looking at a financial crushing blow to your your ability to survive. One more bill that you can't afford from a hospital, from a lab, from from a doctor, from an x-ray technician, from a from an ambulance, all these other bills coming in because you used your insurance and you had this huge deductible that you now have to pay on top of all those other bills and that's just just what you get in, a, in addition to the three hundred and fifty to four hundred dollars that you're paying every month that you can't afford to pay but your government tells you that you can afford it. Oh yes, you can afford it. Yeah, and, and because you can afford it, we know you can. If you don't elect to have it, if you if you say, well you know what, feeding myself, feeding my animals, feeding my children, keeping my roof over my head, keeping electricity, keeping my car, keeping my phone is more important to me and more necessary to me. I really need to have my phone so I can get calls in case I might have an interview or you know a prospective job you know might come along. I need my phone. That's a necessity in this world. 
all these other things like electricity and you know water and all these other things are necessities and oh my goodness maybe maybe with what you have you're going to choose to have that instead of this 350 400 dollar bill every month that's more than your car payment for insurance that the only thing it guarantees instead of having a fifty thousand dollar bill that you can't afford you'll have a twenty thousand or fifteen thousand dollar bill that you can't afford on top of the 350 a month that you're paying Imagine a government like that, where if you don't have enough money to pay the $350, $400 a month, in addition to all the other stuff that you have to pay for, they're going to penalize you because, heaven forbid, that you don't contribute to the system. One way or another, you're going to contribute the money that you don't have to help all those people who are on unemployment, all those people who are on welfare, all those people who are, you know, immigrants that are getting assistance with having a nice house and a nice neighborhood and a nice car. If you if you don't contribute to that, if you're not in the game putting your hard earned and sometimes not earned money into into the pot, well well where do the what do the rich people do? Where where is all their contribution? It's, let's take the money from the poor people, the people that are barely scraping by. Let's take them. And if they, if they don't contribute, then we're going to penalize them at the end of the year. So one way or another, we're going to get money from the people who need it the most. Now imagine those, got those, those companies that have employees that are required to pay a part of you know the, the premium for their employees' insurance. Not all. It used to be that if you were lucky, you had a, an employer that you didn't have to pay hardly anything or nothing at all for insurance. I think those days are gone. Now pretty much no matter what, you have to pay something to have insurance even if you can't afford it. You have to pay something, you know. But those those employers also have to pay something. You know, those employers that have so many employees are required to have insurance or provide insurance at a discount or whatever for their employees. Those guys. What are they going to do to keep the premiums low, keep keep the amount of money that they have to pay for the insurance for, you, for their employees. What are they going to do to keep those premiums low? Well, you know, older people actually had a manager at Community Transit say this. Older people, you know, they, they want to have a healthier workforce, so they're going to hire younger people is about what he said. I heard this from a supervisor at Community Transit who was in my car, that one of the managers at Community Transit actually said this, who was over 50, by the way, so an older guy said this himself. Yeah, well, we want to keep a healthier workforce, so we're more likely to hire younger people. Why would they want a healthier workforce, do you think? What, what, are the, what do you think one of the most prominent reasons that one of the number one reasons would be that they would want a healthier workforce. Is it because they don't want people calling in sick? Well, I'm sure that's part of it because, you know, they probably have to pay for those sick days. They have to pay people to, to be home sick, and they don't like that. They don't like people to, they don't like to pay people for doing no work. But I bet also it has to do with insurance. Healthier workforce means less bills. Less bills, the smaller the premium. Really, for, for group insurance, you know, if the members of that group are having less bills, the premiums stay low. But if the members of that group have big, huge bills, you know, if there's somebody in, the, in that employee pool who gets cancer or some majorly horrible illness, you know, expensive illness like AIDS, it taps into what the whole group has to pay it. It drives the premiums up. So you know they're going to try really hard to hire people that will have less likely of a chance of having major bills, medical bills. So what do you think of a future where people, older people, have less of a chance of getting a job, not just because they're older and they, there's this 
perception that older people can't do the job as well or learn as fast or be as productive. There's that. But on top of that, there's also this, this, you know, older people are going to be less li or more likely to be ill. Older people are more likely to rack up the medical bills. Yeah, older people. You know, if we have too many of those on our workforce, it's going to drive the premiums up that we're going to have to pay more money. So let's not hire those older people. I know what we can do. We can put um, we can put out these uh, these tests that people have to take, these assessments that they have to take, and they have to pass these tests before they can possibly even hope to have an interview. And you know, I bet if we put things on these tests that have absolutely nothing to do with the job that they're applying for, but mm, I don't know, have things like we could put algebra on the test. Yeah, because people who haven't been in school for 30 years are going to remember algebra. Or new math. Yeah, we could put new math on the test because those people that went to school 30 years ago, <laughs> they weren't taught new math. It's a good way to weed out those older people. They can't pass the test. Well, you know, it's not because they were older. No, it's because they couldn't pass the test. Or we could have, you know, um, ridiculous words like, or di ridiculous questions that have, again, nothing to do with the job. Like, give me an eight-letter eight word for pace. What? Anyway, I, I think a world like that already exists. I think this world already exists, and I think that in addition to the fact that it costs so much money to hire people in the country that are trying hard to actually make the country run and support the country, it costs so much more to give those people jobs. So, hey, you know, because it's all about making money and, and not spending too much, I think those those corporations, those big corporations in America, even the U.S. government, yeah, should offshore their jobs, give the jobs away to other countries and help support other countries' economies. While in this country, the people that are what used to be called the middle class are now the upper lower class and sinking fast. Yeah, so those those few jobs of any value out there that don't pay that pay more than, say, $15 an hour, those jobs, everybody's competing for those jobs. What people used to laugh at 10 years ago, $15 an hour, seriously? Now that's a good income. Well, meanwhile, the cost of living hasn't gone down at all. It just keeps going up. Yet people are like little birds picking for scraps under the master's table. Little 15 to little $10 an hour, $11 an hour. Hell, I'll just have two of those to make what I was making before because all those good jobs are gone. They're overseas now. Or computers are using. They use computers now. They don't need to have so many people working at grocery stores now. They're self-checking, you know? Anyway, imagine a world like that where old people, older people, don't get to have jobs because they're likely going to cost more medical bills or they just can't keep up or younger people are just better you know and the middle class jobs are fastly fastly quickly going away more and more people are living on the streets I wonder why more and more tent cities where people are living you know under bridges or in little tents everywhere are going up all over the place. I wonder why. Anymore you find somebody with a cardboard sign on any major intersection and people are getting really good at ignoring them. It's becoming an art form ignoring people who need help. The indifference is spreading. The indifference toward human life, the indifference toward human value and caring, whatever happened to caring. Whatever happened to giving a damn about another person who's in trouble? Imagine a world like that. It sure seems to me like we already have that world. We already live in it. We're all trying to survive in it. I'm afraid for the future. I'm afraid for my own survival. 
I'm afraid to be one of those people, I mean, in a box or in a tent or curled up under a bridge in the dirt. I'm afraid for the callous indifference. Humans looking at other humans like they're nothing but garbage because they don't have enough money. Judging people's value based on money. You know what I found out? Was you could be going along and everything seems to be in control one day. And the very next day, it can all come crashing down. That's the kind of world we have now. And if somebody gets sick and they don't have enough money, you can't even go to a hospital. You no, know, I'm old enough to remember the days that ambulances was a public, an ambulance was a public service. You know, fire department comes to your house when it's on fire and they put the fire out. Do they charge you for that? I remember when ambulances were part of that. The whole, the whole effort to save, save human life was a service free to all. Getting people to the help they needed was free to all. I remember that. I remember when I first heard that ambulances were going to start to charge. And even as a little kid hearing that, it seemed so wrong to me. What if you're in an accident and you're unconscious and they scoop you up and put you in an ambulance and they take you because you're seriously ill? Or what if it's, what if it's an air transport, it's a, it's a helicopter? because you're so ill you have to go to a particular hospital for care and you have no control. You're unconscious. The next thing you know, you manage to, after months of trying to get better in the hospital while you're stressed out of your mind about the fact that you're, all this impossible debt is mounting. Imagine how that would affect somebody's ability to heal and recover, having that stress mounting the longer you're in the hospital. Oh my God like this giant monster, you know, rising in front of you, and you can't stop it. Imagine finding out, oh, by the way, in addition to the humongous hospital bill that you're going to owe because you actually want to try to survive, and, and it's, worth you, it's, it's worth it to you to live, even if it's going to destroy you financially. Imagine if on top of that huge hospital bill and all the other overwhelming debt, you get this humongous bill in the mail from this ambulance or this helicopter ride or whatever that you had no control over, you had no say. Oh, wait, 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 no, no, I can't afford that. They just put you in it and dragged you off to the hospital. Or what if you're, you know, suicidal and the, and the police come to your house and they force you into an ambulance against your will? and force you to a hospital against your will. <laughs> and you don't have any insurance at all. But then you get hammered with a huge hospital bill and a huge ambulance bill that you didn't even consent to being put in. But you still have this humongous expense. I look at the healthcare system and I look at the attitude toward human beings and how everything is just totally obsessed about money and fuck human life and fuck somebody's ability to try to survive without having... I, I have experienced what it feels like to have crushing debt. I had to go through a bankruptcy to get rid of it. And the reason I had that crushing debt was because I had a really big deductible and a surgery. I had, I had my, I had the debt, you know, kind of teetering. I was barely able to make ends meet, and then I had a medical thing happen to me, and I was crushed by that on top of my regular bills. And it's, I, I will never go through another. I will never get to the point again where I have to go through a bankruptcy. It was the best decision I made to do that because it helped me get better. It helped me eliminate a stress that was killing me. One of them. 
and I will never go back there. I will never get in a situation again as far as is, if it's any, if I have any say at all that will put me back where I'm so in debt that for my own health I have to file for bankruptcy. Which means if I got in an accident that caused me to be seriously hurt, or if I got a serious illness, I would not call an ambulance. I would not go to the doctor. I would not do anything. I would just curl up in my home. Because honestly, it would be rather, it would be better, I think, to just go out with some measure of dignity than to watch something that you finally build back up. You know, you, it takes a long time to get your credit back after you go through a bankruptcy. It takes a lot of work. When you finally build it back up to see that crashing down again, I would rather die. Yeah, imagine a world. My dad died when I was six. He never saw a day when ambulances weren't free. He never saw a day where money mattered more than human life. If my dad somehow came to be alive again right now in this existence that we all have to endure, what would he say? What would he think? With all of our progress in so many ways, what kind of society have we become? You see, all this stuff about businesses wanting to deny people because of their sexual orientation. Where is the value of human life? How does that have anything to do with the value of somebody's life? Anyway, this has gotten very long. I just felt... I get, I get discouraged sometimes. It sounds like a science fiction show when I start talking about or thinking about, well, imagine a world. But then it's not, then I, real, then I think it's not science fiction. It's not in the future. It's right now, every day. That's the world we've made. And people are getting left behind and nobody gives a rat's ass. I don't know how we can fix it. How do we fix this? I think human humankind as a species is doomed the way we're going. I think we're doomed. Unless we can somehow turn it around. Start putting people in front of money. People value of human life ahead of money. Anyway, <laughs> I have to end this because otherwise it's going to be really freaking long. If you've been watching, thanks. Bye. I am uh, absolutely convinced that the main source of hatred in the world is religion. And I think it should be religion treated with ridicule and hatred and contempt. Let's get to